My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So this week, I hit a point. A bit of a breaking point, one might say. On Wednesday, I was looking out at the church and I began to feel the immensity of what has taken place over the past few weeks. I'm not entirely sure why it hit me at that moment, because we had been with this for well over four weeks by this point. But for reasons beyond my understanding, I felt this enormous weight come upon me. It almost became too bearable for me in a moment. Throughout that morning, on Wednesday morning, I found myself saying to God, Lord, I don't know how I can do this. Later that morning, I went off to celebrate Mass, as I do every Wednesday at St. Thomas. And the weight was feeling so great that even when I came to the foot of the altar, I stood there and questioned and pondered, Lord, what is it that you are doing in this time? Help me. And as the liturgy unfolded, I began to feel this peace, this grace, slowly descend upon me. I suspect all of us at various moments in our lives had had these occasions when we feel the difficulties of life, the painful challenges of life, become so immense, so overwhelming that we find ourselves incapable of doing anything. But the weight wears greatly upon us, as it did with me on Wednesday. Yet as I discerned throughout the afternoon and I was talking with a friend that night, I realized I wasn't necessarily alone. And that what I was experiencing at that time was entirely typical and normal. My gosh, look at what we've been through. This is an event that very few people ever experience in their life. And my friend said to me, at the time I didn't receive it entirely well at the moment, but my friend said to me, but God has chosen you for this moment. Now let me tell you at that point, I thought, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I was a little bit irritated with him. I'm so Minnesotan, a little bit irritated. <laughs> I was irritated with him. Because I thought, who are you to say that this was God's plan for me? Who are you to suggest that I must carry this weight? And then I was mad at God and I thought, really? You couldn't think of something better for me? But I sat with it. The next morning, I opened up the lectionary for today, and I began to read that first lesson from Paul from his beautiful letter to the Ephesians. And there he says it. God chose you to be holy and blameless in God's sight. God chose you. In the Christian tradition, the Jewish Christian tradition, I should say, there's a deep tradition in which we understand that all of us have a particular vocation and role in our lives. And that God calls each one of you for a very specific purpose. There's intentionality to this. That God chose you 
to be holy and blameless. That God chose you to do something in this world to proclaim God's grace. Now the issue is, if we're all realistic with ourselves, that may sound very nice, but it can be quite difficult when we're feeling the weight of life. Whether the joys or the sorrows, the sufferings. Sometimes life can sort of cloud that vision and we can become discouraged and lose sight of what exactly it is that God may be calling you and I to. And in moments such as what I experienced on Wednesday, you almost want to step back and say, no, 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 this isn't for me. If you're familiar with the story of Moses, Moses went through this as well. According to the scriptures, Moses pleaded with God multiple times and said, look, you got the wrong guy. Moses came up with every possible excuse. I'm not a good speaker. I got a lisp. I'm not strong enough. I did this. I did that and so forth. And God kept turning to him and said, no, no, it's you that I chose. It's you that I set apart. Now, I'll be entirely clear here. I don't exactly know entirely what my call is in life. (laughs) If I did, it'd make it a lot easier. Planning would be much more simple. But what I began to realize on Thursday as I was praying and sitting with this text that in all of this, there is a real purpose to what we are going through. It may not be immediately evident now, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it doesn't have to be evident now. But God is inviting you and I into this deep and profound relationship, this relationship of trust. And God is saying, look, I chose you. I chose you from the beginning of time. There's that wonderful line in the scriptures, which I love all the time, before you were born, I knew you. In your hand I held you. In my hand I held you. Paul adds something else in that passage that I think is helpful. Paul says, and God gives us every spiritual blessing to do the thing that we are called to do. God doesn't say it will be easy. In fact, quite the contrary. Look at poor John the Baptist. Hopefully we never have to deal with his fate. It's a strange reading for this time of year. But even John the Baptist persisted despite the obstacles that he faced. Now that phrase that God chose us to be holy and blameless I think needs to be clarified here. Oftentimes when you and I think of holiness, we think of some sort of piety or somehow that we're very good or we're well behaved. Well, let me tell you, even the greatest saints of the church were not well behaved. (laughs) They were not saints because they didn't do anything wrong. As a seminary professor of mine used to say, God doesn't call the perfected, God perfects the called. God isn't looking for you and I to be perfect and utterly fantastic in every possible way. No, God is calling you and I to be the persons that we are meant to be and to live our vocation in the life that we have. But God also gives us the grace to do so. And what began to dawn on me as I prayed about this and as as I looked at my own situation right now, what I realize is that the grace right now is the grace to be here and now present in this moment and not thinking five years down the road, not thinking ten years down the road, not trying to assume that I have every answer for everything, but rather to be present here and now. 
to be present with one another here and now in love and grace. We don't have to have the answers. That will come in time. The invitation that God is having for us by calling us holy is God setting us apart for a particular task and a particular mission. Holy, by the way, comes from the Greek word hagios, which simply meant to be set apart. And it was understood that you were set apart for a particular task, a mission. So God has called us, invited us, wants us to be holy. He sets us apart for this task. But God doesn't expect you and I to know the outcome of that. And that's the beauty of things. We don't have to know. The only thing you and I actually have to do here and now is to be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of God in this time. To get up every day and say, Lord, help me, guide me, lead me, teach me way, the ways of the Lord, show me the ways of everlasting life, as the scripture says. Simply to recommit ourselves day after day to say, Lord, I'm going to do as you wish me to do. I'm going to live here and now in this present moment. And I'm going to accept that you have a plan in place. I don't need to know all the details, but I'm going to trust. What I'm increasingly finding, for myself at least, and I don't know how this will all unfold for all of you, but what I'm finding for myself at least is this time is becoming a time of rich grace. Even in those messy moments, even on Wednesday morning when I went to the altar and thought, I can't do this anymore. Because at the altar, I suddenly felt this profound grace come down upon me that said, yes, you can. And behind me, there was an assembly of several people standing there, and I felt all of them lifting me up in that moment, just as Moses had his arms lifted up as he was parting the Red Sea. And I knew in that moment, yes, I can do this, but I do so with the grace of God and with all of you. And this is the second thing I want to say. Our call from God is lived out not just in individuality. It's not lived out in isolation. It's lived out in community. See, the one thing that modern Christianity gets wrong is modern Christianity often thinks this call is between you and Jesus. That it's something just very individualistic. But it's not. The call is a call to you in the context of a larger community. And that's why we gather here on Sundays. We don't gather just because it's a nice performance. We don't gather because this is something cute and lovely we do every week, no matter how hot it is outside. We do because we know the God of life is calling you and I in this moment in community. And that as a community, we stand and we support each other through our pains, our struggles, our joys and sorrows. Just as those people help me lift up the Eucharist on Wednesday, so you help each other to live up your call and vocation. And quite frankly, it's a mutual relationship. As I'm here to lift you up, so you are here to lift me up. This call that God has for each of us is a call that's lived in the context of community. Again, I have no idea where God is leading us. Forever. But I do know and I do trust that new life is emerging in ways that you and I can probably hardly ever imagine. 
And I don't know about you, but I'm finding a more intense spiritual life right now than I have ever experienced in my entire life. Now, I know that may not be true for all of you. Some of you may be going through not only difficulties here, but in your personal life. But my invitation to you in that is turn to us. Turn to this place. Look around. Look at each other. And let each of us help live you, help you live your vocation. Let us help lift you up in that. Because God has called you for a specific purpose. The invitation is, will you say yes? Will you be open to that call? Amen.